So Conrad, can I just firstly say to you, thank you very much for hosting me. And, Pleasure. And allow me to come here and obviously make this video, but also allow me to pick your brains on vinyl playback in general. But I'd like to learn more about Avid as a hi-fi manufacturer, because if my maths are correct, you've been in business or making hi-fi for over 25 years. Yes, right. So that really is you know, something, a real big achievement. So firstly, congratulations okay. on that. But hi, um, Avid as a hi-fi manufacturer, what would you say makes you unique? What makes Avid unique? After spending about 20 years uh, developing the first product, which was our Acutus turntable, some friends said, that might uh, be a good business. So uh, Avid was born. Um, what's unique about Avid is really our approach to how we manufacture our products in terms of the design philosophy. So whether it be a turntable, an amplifier or a loudspeaker, they all share the same fundamental design philosophy. And that really is that we remove bad vibration that's in all hi-fi equipment away from the good vibration that you want to hear as quickly as possible. So by doing that, it means that you just get to hear what is on the recorded uh, information, whether it be a record or a CD or a whatever, and all the bad vibration, we basically uh, make a path of least resistance to get rid of that vibration as quickly as possible, just to leave you with what you want to hear. Which is interesting because obviously you make you manufacture sorry a, a full hi-fi system, don't you, Richie, from yes. cartridges all the way through to, to, through to speakers. But I'd like to talk to you about all of that. But can we first talk about turntables, please? Because Certainly. I've obviously looked at your product range before I came here because I was trying to work out what would be the right turntable for me as a newcomer to to vinyl playback. But obviously one with overly high expectations, you know, shooting for the moon before yep. you even start type of approach. So looking, looking at the more maybe more entry level products, you have the Ingenium, which is a plug and play yep. turntable, but also the Diva 2, which yes. seems like it's more feature rich. So in your advice, what would be the correct turntable maybe to start with and what, what would be your advice on that? And what, what would you expect as you move up the Avid range? It depends uh, where your expectations are and where you want to go. The Ingenium plug and play is uh, exceptional value uh, for money within its uh, price class. Um, it offers a solution that you can take it out of the box, have it up and going within two or three minutes. And for newcomers to uh, hi-fi, uh, to record playing, who don't really think they're gonna progress any more than that, then that's a perfect solution. It gives exceptional uh, value for money, sound, uh, and easy to put together. The Diva 2 really offers somebody something where they can build on. So they can change arm, they can change cartridge, and they can really uh, push the limits of uh, where they want to go. And then maybe explore our higher models, which that turntable is more akin to, rather than the Ingenium plug and play, which uh, offers more of a solution, whereas the other one is more of a, um, a platform that you can build on and swap and change and do things with. So, so moving up from the Diva then up, up the range, uh, even up to the Acutus, what, what would someone expect to, to get turntable-wise? What, what are the benefits? What are the changes? What are the improvements? Well, the really interesting thing about um, that question is it's the question that everybody asks. Um, uh, and it's on a basis where, how does it get better as we go up? The whole Avid range and all of our products are designed from what we call top down. With all our products, we always develop the absolute best that we can. And then we cascade that technology downwards. So when you go up in our range, there's a huge difference between each step. And it offers obviously exceptional value for money because you get a lot for that uh, extra uh, payment. So as opposed to look what you get more as you go up the range, it's almost better to look at well, what do you lose as you come down the range. So if you look at the top of our range, uh, it offers the absolute state of the art. There's just no better uh, type of performance. As you come down, it's very much like looking through a camera lens. So if you look through a camera lens, and it's absolutely pinpoint sharp. You can see everything there in focus, all the colors, the depth, everything is there. As you come down our range, everything is still there, but it's almost as if the uh, focus goes out uh, slightly. So things aren't quite so sharp. The definition isn't quite as good. 
Um, perhaps there's a little bit more noise than you would hear in the top of the range. And that's primarily because um, the certain elements that make the top of the range work so well are reducing in quality as you come down to the lower levels in our product range. You wouldn't notice that though until you go up a step. And when you go up a step, you really notice the improvements that you get. And that's primarily because all of our products are very neutral in their sound. So when you're at the entry level, it's not really bassy or really bass light or anything. It's very, very neutral. But as you go up our product range, everything just becomes more sharper, more in focus, more definition, and just a whole general improvement in sound. What about if you are just new to vinyl playback in general? What are the things that are important? What are the things that you should be paying attention to and be mindful of? If you're new to vinyl, uh, the chances are you're probably gonna look at a more entry level uh, type of uh, product. So if you're looking at the Ingenium plug and play, uh, we've designed that to be a, a, a out of the box solution. So we've taken care of, if you like, all the things that you might need to think about. You can literally put it somewhere and play it. It's probably important that you pay attention to where you put it. Obviously, if you're gonna put it on top of a washing machine, that's <laughs> not gonna be the best place to put it. So ideally, you might wanna consider a wall shelf or something like that, that's something very solid because the cartridge is picking up really small amounts of vibration. And that's whether it's from the record or from your living environment. So you wanna reduce the impact of your living environment on your turntable as much as possible. When you uh, have something like uh, the Diva uh, and upwards, these things are, are basically crafted to try and minimize the effect of those bad vibrations, particularly external vibrations, as much as possible. And for instance, uh, the Acutus, where it has a very unique suspension system, uh, it can eliminate vibrations all the way down to, uh, you know, two hertz. So basically the, uh, the cartridge and the turntable is immune from pretty much anything on planet Earth. So it gives you, you know, uh, a faithful reproduction. So that's a, that's a really interesting thing, something I've not thought of at all. So for example, if you spent less money on, on the turntable, you might have to spend more money on the isolation of the turntable. But in yes. theory, spending more money on the turntable means maybe you need to spend less on the isolation. It, it, that seems like a, a very general statement, but could, could that be yeah, remotely that's, correct? Uh, yeah, totally true, yes. So if the turntable is doing the job of isolating, then it's uh, much less important. So for instance, uh, we have the turntable here on this rack. We could pretty much put any rack underneath this turntable. You're not gonna know any difference at all because the turntable at this isolation frequency is totally immune to anything that is uh, supporting it. So moving down, obviously, from, from, the, from the turntable, maybe into the phono stage. Now, I know a phono stage is really important that you need one. I yep. know a little bit about what it does, but what I don't know is what makes a good one. What makes a good phono stage? That's a very easy uh, answer, exceptionally low noise. Um, you're dealing with a signal from a cartridge, which most of the time is very, very small. And that very small signal can be corrupted and distorted really easily. So by having a phono stage with exceptionally low noise, you then don't add to the signal that you hear that is then amplified. Our balanced phono stages offer absolutely exceptionally low noise and low distortion and uh, become immune from the outside world because of their balanced uh, nature. Our phono stages offer a, generally a much higher gain level than is normal because we believe that the uh, greater the gain, closer to the source as possible, as that signal then goes down through to the main amplifier, it's less likely to be corrupted by external noise and, and things like that. So exceptionally low noise and um, uh, high gain is the two big key factors. Obviously then you have the sonic abilities, so uh, and the components we use and things like that, again, offer a very neutral, uh, but dynamic and lifelike sound. Our entry level phono stage is all in one box. And as you move up the range, uh, we move to phono stages which have a separate power supply. Power supplies can be a big source of uh, noise. So we have uh, a separate power supply with a long cable, so you can put that whether it's uh, out of harm's way. And as we move up the range, we also move into what we call balanced phono stages. Essentially a balanced phono stage is um, what most people would not have as a normal phono stage times two, 
one is operating one way, one is operating the other, and they cancel any noise or anything out from each other. So they take a little bit more space to uh, have uh, in a box. So that's why uh, they get bigger in size as they go up. Talking about, I suppose, upgrading the turntable, I remember asking someone else in the industry about, you know, how do you upgrade a turntable? And the first thing they said to me was upgrade the cartridge. But, you know, not knowing much about them, you know, yep. what, what makes a good cartridge and what, I suppose, what makes an avid cartridge? Well, upgrading the cartridge, uh, if you have uh, a record player solution where the arm is attached to the uh, turntable, it's a, a fixed uh, item, uh, upgrading the cartridge is uh, a, a good thing to do. The cartridge, uh, might seem to be the front end, but actually it's very uh, reliant on the quality of the arm and the turntable. And very often you can use a really inexpensive cartridge, but improve the turntable and the arm and get unbelievable uh, quality from an inexpensive cartridge. So the first thing that uh, we would always uh, recommend, particularly if you're looking at our uh, higher level turntables, is to make sure the turntable and the arm is exceptionally good quality before you look at improving the cartridge. Once you've got those two things well sorted, then you can look at the, uh, the cartridge. Because otherwise, you're gonna spend a lot of money on a cartridge and you're gonna limit its performance by the quality of the arm and the turntable. So you, essentially, you could be just wasting your money, throwing it at a better cartridge, but limiting its uh, uh, performance. Our advice generally would be that uh, a nine inch arm offers the best compromise because it gives you high rigidity, relatively low moving mass, um, and it's still exceptionally low uh, tracking distortion. Fundamentally, what we do is we make equipment so that people can enjoy music. This is what it's all about, enjoying their music in uh, the, the best way that they can that gives them an experience rather than just listening to music. And everything that we do is about creating equipment that will give you the best possible experience. So when uh, we design our equipment, we design it very much uh, in that uh, mind. We have uh, offer three solutions of each type of product. Um, we call it good, better, best. <laughs> and what uh, uh, we recommend is that uh, with, with a turntable, for instance, you'd put as much of your budget as you can into the turntable and then secondary into the arm and lastly into the cartridge. And as you uh, evolve uh, your turntable and you uh, improve things, you would then perhaps put more money into the turntable, but keep the arm and cartridge and then improve things, or you'd improve then the arm and then you'd improve the cartridge. So we do it in a way that you can do it in stages to suit your budget, but to get the maximum performance. I want to talk to you about manufacturing because one of the things that really impressed me is firstly coming in here, this facility is fantastic. It's a big room. You've got yep. toys everywhere. It's like an audio files, Aladdin's cave, you know, speakers everywhere and amplifiers and all awesome stuff. And the, the, am I right in thinking you want to try and open this facility up a little bit to customers and dealers? So, so we bought this facility, uh, which is our second factory, uh, basically to use as R&D, uh, but also to have it as a facility where uh, dealers can bring customers. Uh, we can have open days. We can do training here. And before COVID, uh, that's exactly what we were doing. Which I think is really, really beneficial because there's nothing like actually seeing seeing stuff with your own eyes. And, and make, yep. I, I don't like touching other people's hi-fi, but you know, yep. actually getting hands-on with stuff, it really makes a difference. Yep. So this, this bit's really impressive, but the, the really impressive part is actually the other facility, like the manufacturing yep. side of things, because it, it's great to see something being manufactured from start to finish. That's always interesting. What is the benefit of having manufacturing all done in-house and you know, what, what does that mean for Avid? It gives us um, a lot of flexibility. It also means that uh, we set our own standards, which are very, very high, to make sure that we uh, continually keep those uh, uh, high standards. One of the things about having our own uh, exceptionally high precision machines is that we know that 
every product is exactly the same. So, you know, when you get it delivered, you know that that is no different to any other one that's uh, been made. So you know that it's uh, sounding exactly how it should do. You touched on something there, because when I was over in the factory, I, I spoke to one of the guys and he was telling me that he, or showing me that he hand assembles everything. Yep. Literally every piece was going in there by hand. And yes. he was telling me how he would solder every single, and that was really a surprise because there was a lot of parts on that huge board that yeah. he was playing with. So um, I suppose how important is that? You know, how, how big a part of that and how much, I suppose, added time and cost is there in, in terms of a, a genuine hand-assembled product? We live in an uh, era of um, what you call a surface mount uh, electronics. So where you have a machine that just populates it all and uh, it where it goes. The reason that we uh, hand populate everything is primarily the majority of all our uh, PCBs are what you call through hole components. And uh, they're best uh, done by hand. And then we hand solder literally everything. And we do that primarily because we're manufacturing to what you'd call mill spec. And uh, with uh, military specification, it offers unparalleled reliability. So very rarely does equipment come back for repair or uh, anything that goes wrong. And that's because we put all the effort in at the beginning to make sure that it's got that durability and long lifespan. Uh, and you do that uh, in the same way that uh, you'd manufacture uh, military grade equipment. One last thing I want to talk to you about, Conrad, um, is what you can see behind us there is your speaker range and, and amplifiers as well, but yep. speaker range too, particularly the speakers, because <laughs> I see a lot of speakers, but sometimes you see some and they really stand out, especially when you touch, and I was touching them off camera, by the way, I, I couldn't help myself. But yep. They're the reference range of speakers, right? And they really are something. You've got some really big ones over there that weigh an absolute ton. Yeah. I saw the guys moving some as we were setting all this up, and I could see how heavy they were. But obviously, they're a very kind of high-ticket item, aren't they? You can just yep. obviously tell that about them price-wise. So you've got a new range of speakers that are coming out called the Evo range, which is, from what I can tell, trying to you know get as much of that as possible to a more affordable price point. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference, I suppose, with the Evo range? And then what would you expect going from Evo up to to the reference, what would be the improvement? The uh, Evo range, just like all our other equipment, literally cascades down from the reference range to the Evo range. Uh, the reference range uh, are primarily uh, cabinets which are made all exclusively out of uh, aluminium. So they offer a very uh, high rigid, stable uh, cabinet design. Uh, what's unique about our loudspeakers is that we use a special damping system coupled directly to the driver, which eliminates the majority of any vibration coming from the driver, which typically goes into the cabinet and you then get uh, uh, sound distortion. We have a, a baffle system where we have what's called uh, uh, a damping system, uh, basically coupled to the back of the driver. It absorbs all the vibration that would typically find its way into the cabinet. So that on our Evo range remains in place. Um, and basically we've changed the metal cabinet to a wooden cabinet. Uh, the wooden cabinet uh, primarily is less rigid and uh, that affects the sound in as much that it becomes maybe a slightly softer sound, a little bit less focused. A bit like I mentioned earlier, the camera lens just going out of focus as we come down. And then I assume it must be similar. Is it similar for the amplifiers as well? So if you used to take our, uh, the covers off our top of the range uh, reference preamp and mono amplifiers, and then literally our entry level uh, amplifiers, you would literally see shared components. You could see almost how it morphs from the top all the way down to the bottom. And that's because we take the, the top design and literally cascade it all the way down. And uh, by doing that, we keep a, a good synergy with the design all the way through. The sound is very, very similar. And it basically comes down to that camera lens just going out of focus as you, as you move down uh, uh, through the range. And that actually is uh, a reason why, you know, our best selling products are our entry level and our top of the range. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we have plenty of sales within the mid range, but a lot of the time people uh, come in, they listen, and then it's almost like, well, I'd be silly not to uh, uh, go for the top. And uh, a lot of people do just uh, skip products and jump up 
to the higher levels. That makes perfect sense to me because it's either best value or best performance and it's one or the other there you go. in terms of yeah. the top and the bottom. Well, look, Conrad, this has been a really fascinating conversation. Nope. I've, learnt, I've learnt loads, you know what I mean? Learned absolutely loads. And I must admit, I really want to play with the turntables, but I'm less confident with that. But obviously, speakers and amplifiers, I'd love to get some. Yeah, no, I'm sure we can work that out. Uh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. But obviously, thank you for showing me around. Thank you for hosting me. Uh, and, and for answering, obviously, my uh, probably quite intrusive questions. No, no it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, look, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful, interesting, fascinating, and helpful. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. Conrad, I think we're out of COVID enough yeah. for me to shake your hand. Indeed. So thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.